Today in the joy of editing, it's the duplex filter found in Nick 8 color effects. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome back to the joy of editing with Dave Cully. Today we're diving into one of my favorite creative tools in Nick 8 color effects, the duplex filter. From subtle glow to dreamy contrast, it offers unique possibilities for enhancing your images. I'll show you exactly how I use it to bring out character and atmosphere. By the way, if you don't yet own the Nick Collection 8, where you'll find Nick 8 color effects, or if you would like to purchase any of DxO software, click on my affiliate links in the description below this video. If you're purchasing any of the DxO software for the first time, you can use my promo code Dave Kelly. Now that's all one word, Dave Kelly at checkout and save 15% off your purchase. This does not apply to upgrades. If you just want to try out a piece of DxO software, they also offer free trials. Well, let's go ahead and jump right in. I have this image here. I'm going to show you how to use the duplex filter with this image, give it a dreamy look, change the color on it a little bit. And then after that, I'll show you three other images that I ran the duplex filter on and show you the results just to give you an idea of how it can be used. Now you'll notice I have this background layer. I'm going to click on the C and open up the color effects panel, click open and we'll launch color effects and get started. And here we are in Nick 8 color effects. I'm coming to the left side of the interface and we're going to look for duplex. All these filters are in alphabetical order. You could come up here to the search bar and type in the name duplex to find it quickly, but I know it's right here. I'm going to click the plus and already we have a nice dreamy looking image, but let's take a look at all the different sliders here. This is an easy filter to use, but I'm going to break it all down for you. Now, if we look at the very first thing we can do with this filter, it says color. We have a color picker and a swatch here. If you click on the color picker, you could pick any color on this image. Like I'll click on the red. Notice how the image gets like a red tint to it. You could do a command or control Z to undo that. The other thing we can do is we don't have to use the picker. We can click on this swatch and note that I have a color wheel that I could change the color to any color I want, or I have these various ways of changing colors. I like to use the color wheel. I'm using a Mac computer. If you're using a Windows machine, it may look different, but I'm pretty sure you'll have a color wheel like I do. It'll probably look a little different, but if you'll note right here, this is the default color. It's a warm color. I'm just gonna click the X for now to close this. Let's start out by shutting all these sliders off just so we can see what they're doing. And let's start out with the strength slider. The color that you see in this swatch is controlled by the strength slider. Now you would think with this strength slider being off that the image would be black and white. It's not, I wish it was, but it's not. It has a bit of this color in it. And remember you could change this color when you click on the swatch and use the color wheel to change it to any color that you want. Now let's take the strength slider and I'll start to drag it to the right. See how that saturation of that color increases till I take it up to 100%. So that's what that does. It controls how saturated the color in the swatch will be. Let's start out with this amount of strength of 70%. But I want you to note also, look at the pants in this area of the dog. See how these areas are blown out? If I shut off the duplex filter by unchecking this, you can see there's detail in these light areas. When I've shut all of those sliders off, I've blown out highlights. So that's kind of interesting. I just want to point that out because you could lose highlights in your image if you're not careful. So keep that in the back of your mind. We'll deal with these highlights later. Now let's look at the diffusion slider. What this slider does, it brings some really nice style to the image. It gives you a diffused look. In other words, it adds some blur to the image, gives it a bit of a glow. Isn't that nice as I drag this to the right? Even if I take it the whole way up to 100%, we're getting a nice diffused glow on this image. But let's go ahead and drag it back just a little bit to maybe somewhere right around in here. And now let's move on to saturation. I'll move this slider to the right. And what I do is start to add some of the original saturation back in the image. And we could keep going and take it up to 100% if we want to. Now, I don't like that for me. For the duplex filter, I like a minimal amount of saturation. I think it gives it a really nice stylized look. For me, for this image, I think like right around here looks good. And here's something I note with saturation. It starts to recover the highlights. You notice in the pants and on the dog right here. Let me take it back off. 
see how we have blown highlights in the pants in here. As I move the saturation slider to the right, it does start to recover some of the highlights. So that's interesting. Now, if I go the whole way to the right, I can recover most of the highlights, but that looks really horrible. So let's pull it back. And I think it looks good maybe right around here. But I think for saturation, less is better, at least for me. Right now, this image is looking pretty good. I need to recover the highlights in this dog a little bit better. But for now, let's move on to contrast. And this is just a simple contrast adjustment. So if I drag this slider to the right, we add more contrast. To the left, less contrast. And I find for the duplex filter, lower amounts of contrast seems to give you a more stylized look. So in this case, I might just add just a little wee bit of contrast, but play with it and see what you like. Maybe you do like a more contrasty look. But for me, I'm going to leave this one down to right around here. I think that looks good. And like with all of these Nick filters, you have shadow recovery and highlight recovery. So we can recover shadows by dragging the slider to the right and even add a more dreamy look to it when you take it to the right. And I like it maybe right about here. I think that looks good. Now we can recover the highlights on this dog's fur and the little bit of highlights we we're clipping in the pants. We could get those back by recovering highlights by dragging the highlight slider to the right. And I think right about here should do the trick now if i shut off the duplex filter here's before and here's after you also can adjust the overall opacity of this filter you can start to drag this to the left to bring back some of the original image if you want to but i'm going to leave it at 100 percent. i usually save this for photoshop if i feel i need to pull back in the filter i'll do it in photoshop i really like this look so what i would do i would come down to the bottom right of the interface and click on send as a layer that'll send this back as a layer in photoshop then i can continue to experiment for instance i could come up and click on this swatch and maybe change this to more of a magenta by clicking here and don't forget you have this brightness slider you can lighten this or darken this color whatever you like i'll click ok but now i've added a magenta look now maybe the strength is too strong so i'll pull this back to maybe right around here and maybe I'll add some more saturation, the original saturation of the image back in, maybe to about here. Now I'm blowing out my highlights again. So remember, we got this highlight adjustment. We can recover those highlights. I'll move this to the right and pull those highlights back in. So be watching for that. And also what you can do is you can look at your histogram and make sure you're not clipping. See if I take this highlight slider the whole way to the right, you can see this really long spike right here. Make sure you're not clipping. So look at your histogram and make sure you're not clipping out your highlights. Right like that should do the trick. Now, if this is too light, what you can do is click on this swatch again and take this brightness slider and drag it to the right to darken that up a bit and click OK. See how that darkens it down a little bit? So you have control with the color. You can make it lighter. You can make it darker. You can adjust the diffusion, give it more diffusion, less diffusion, saturation, bring more of the original image saturation in or take it the whole way off, whatever you like. And for this image with the magenta look, I think the saturation looks good right about here. And don't forget, you can add more contrast or less. I want to add more of the magenta, so I'll take the string slider and we'll start to move it to the right. And I think right there, I like that. And now I could click send as a layer, send that back to Photoshop and keep working. But for now, I think I'm done. I'm going to go ahead and click apply. And here we are back in Photoshop. Let me go ahead and shut off this layer. We started out here and now I'm here. I really like this. And remember, I can take the opacity of this layer and start to pull it back and bring some of the original image back in if I want to. But for now, I think I'll leave it at 100%. So here is the one I just sent back. And here is the one that I sent back as a layer when I was still working in color effects. So we have these two that we can pick from. And now let me show you some other examples of images that I've ran the duplex filter on. So I have this image right here, which is a landscape image. Will it work on landscape images? I think it will. It really depends what you're looking for. This is the original image and here it is with one version of the duplex filter. Gives it a nice dreamy, like old timey look. Here's another version. So pretty interesting. Let's look at another image. I have this one. This is without the duplex filter. Here's one version of the duplex filter. I like that one. Here's another version and yet another version. So pretty cool. And here's the last example I have for you. 
This is without the duplex filter. Here's one version. I really like that. Here's another and yet another. I don't know. I think I like this one the best. But there it is, everyone, the duplex filter. It's probably one you never think of using. But now that you know how to use it, I would give it a try. I think you're going to like it. Now, it's not for every image, but you might have an image out there that you may like to try it on. Well, there it is, everyone, the duplex filter. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, please give this video a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so that you receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.